Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name's Lucas, welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to organize your desktop for maximum productivity for doing music production and recording. The first thing that you'll notice, as you can tell, this is my desktop. I have nothing saved to it. I know a lot of people that end up having a huge mess on their desktop, so I decided not to ever really save anything to my desktop because it's just such an easy place to just have like a dumpster of disorganized stuff and just it just seems like a good place to lose everything. So my first tip is to actually not save anything to your desktop. If you feel like you do want to save stuff to your desktop, I totally respect that, but try to keep it as organized as you can because I think it's a really easy place to have a huge mess. So the first thing that I would do if you're either new to production or like really want to organize your computer for music production is actually create a folder in your home folder. This is the main folder on Mac that has your different subfolders like downloads, documents, so on and so forth. So I just have a separate folder just called recording and that's where anything related to recording lives. So I have one folder for my Ableton sessions, so I'll get into that in a second another folder for Pro Tools sessions, and another folder for samples. In Ableton sessions, that's the main DAW that I use. Whatever DAW you use, I recommend just labeling, labeling a folder. You can just call it sessions, whatever. Um, I actually have this organized by artist. That way, anytime I ever need to pull something up for a particular project, I know which artist I'm looking for. So to me, this makes the most sense. This is pretty much how all the commercial studios that I worked at organized their hard drive. So this is a million times better than just having a bunch of loose sessions all over. Um, I cannot stress how important this is. So save your sessions by artists. If you're not doing a commercial studio thing or if you're not working with a lot of people and just kind of getting started, then this is less important. You can just uh, save a bunch of sessions in your Ableton sessions folder or Pro Tools sessions folder. But once you start collaborating with people, it's super important to have that organized because it can be really annoying if you're working on a collab and you can't find the session for whatever reason, that can really kill the vibe. So that's my Ableton sessions folder. Another quick thing that I'll mention is my format for labeling a project file. For example, for this one, I have my initials, the name of the artist, the name of the song, a version number, and the BPM, all in the title. This helps keep things very organized because I can always search for the artist's name. I can always, anyone that I send the project file to knows that uh, my initials are on it so they know that I worked on the track. So you get credit for your work, presumably. Obviously the name of the file, I like to keep version numbers just in case we make a bunch of changes and they're like, oh, actually I liked version two better. You can just go back to that one. And I always have the BPM there because if you're ever collaborating with another producer or an engineer or something, it's just really helpful to have the BPM written down so they don't have to figure it out. Or if there's a little delay in the audio, they know the exact BPM, which is a lot easier to import files that way. So I just recommend having the BPM in. When I've worked on production teams, they make you do that. So that's useful to have. That's that's my Ableton Sessions folder. Um, now I'm going to talk about samples because it's a huge part of producing any type of music these days, organizing samples. I have a whole video about this um, if you want to check it out on my page that's about organizing your splice sample library. So I'm going to kind of use that in this, as an example. With drum samples and drum loops and stuff, this is the basic way that I have my folders organized. I have kick, snare, clap, hats, percussion, 808, drum loops, and melody loops. And under these, there's a bunch of other folders too with much more specific criteria. And I like using very, very descriptive terminology for these folders, otherwise it's just a mess and you might as well just have it in one folder at that point. So for example, I have long kicks anytime I'm looking for a long kick or a stomp or something like that versus punchy kicks or vintage kicks. You could name it like music genres, like trap kicks, EDM kicks, whatever works for you. I just like these descriptors. Um, same thing for snare, you know, so I have retro snares, rim shots, trap snares, live snares, that kind of thing. So this is just the gist of how I organize this. Um, in drum loops, I have very, very specific ones. So that's just the basic rundown of how I keep my stuff organized. Let me know if you find this helpful. I hope it will help you get started uh, producing music and not losing your files and stuff like that because that always happens to the best of us and is really um, unfortunate. You could do all of this on an external hard drive, by the way, so that might make sense for a lot of people. I've used 
um, optical hard drives as well as um, solid state drives for externals. Um, I have numerous hard drives connected, but I found that I prefer saving my actual sessions on my laptop drive because I've had those external drives fail before. Um, so I just keep backups on those external drives, but some people may choose to keep all their sessions on an external just because it's so much stuff that it fills up your computer. So go ahead and get one of those. You can get an optical drive. Those work pretty well, but the solid state drives are a little bit faster. So let me know if this is helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video.